Hey folks, thanks everyone for coming today. Um, my name is Gustavo Pantuza, and I would like to share with you um, how you leverage open telemetry collectors um, and protocol to create a observability solu solution that is able to, to ingest 6.5 terabytes of the telemetry data per day. Well, um, I kind of I can't believe they let me get away with this huge presentation title, so th thanks Kubcom for that. Um, I'm the tech lead manager for the observability team uh, inside Vitex. I also have uh, previously worked for GoDaddy and also for Global.com. It's sort of uh, Netflix from South America. Uh, those are my handles for uh, GitHub and Twitter, so if you would like to reach out. I also uh, write about computer science topics on my personal blog in uh, Brazilian Portuguese so we can strengthen our local community of computer science. Well, let's jump into the agenda for this presentation. And first, I would like to share with you what kind of system are you observing, right? So what is it text about? So and inside this, uh, this context, where is the problem? Which, which problem are we trying to solve? And then before jumping into the details of the architecture and solution, just briefly state what is the solution in the, in the outcomes uh, we reach it with this solution. Then we jump into the architecture, architectural part where I would like to share with you how we are implementing those things and also talking about resilience of the solution. So uh, how we avoid outages and keep these things up and running. So what is the system are you observing? Vitex is a digital uh, enterprise digital commerce platform where customers can build, manage it, and deliver uh, their online stores. It's a multi-tenant platform, so we have a single platform where the brands come and deliver their stores using this shared uh, platform. We have uh, today 3,200 3, um, online stores delivered over three, uh, 38 uh, countries, alongside 30, 38 countries. Also, we are up to 1.3 thousand uh, employees over uh, 18 locations around the globe. So where is the problem in this recalling? Uh, we are talking about a multi-tenant e-commerce platform. So we have uh, only a single observability use it to have only a single observability vendor system for logging and so on. And all of the applications alongside all modules inside this e-commerce platform, they use it to send code, uh, telemetry data directly to this uh, single place uh, vendor and observability system. Well, within this context of having this uh, centralized place, we have too many implementations, libraries for communicating with this vendor, with this solution, and none of them are com has common things like fields and also resilience controls that w would be nice across all of the teams, not by different teams. Also, the data governance, uh, whether we businesses, uh, person, also engineers get together in the same place and, and was able to reach some sort of telemetry data that sometimes uh, we would like to have a more granular, granular uh, governance. Also, uh, when it comes to KPIs, let's say for business metrics, uh, teams use it to do queries and analytical stuff on top of a login solution. So it was not the best place for it, so we would like to split those things and, and, and understand better and give better solutions for for analytical stuff. Also, uh, not a single vendor is able to get the, the best solution for all of the telemetry, for each of the telemetry data. So for us as well, it, is, it was something like, uh, we have logs, metrics, and traces, and there is no vendor, in our opinion, which is the best one for each one of them, for all, all of them, them together. Uh, also, the an inefficient ingestion control, whether single proxy, just sending data to, to this uh, observability system elsewhere, and not, no, 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 no control such as uh, sampling, for example. Also, the libraries, they use it to, to 
be written over HTTP 1.1 with no encryption on it. Also, data was going through this pipeline as raw strings, unstructured logs, also uh, some sort of metrics and trying to do traces on top of our logging systems. And also, no common fields spreads al alongside the teams and engineering teams. So all of those problems together, uh, if I could state as in a tweet or something like that, what kind of problem are we trying to solve? It is how to evolve to a long-term observability solution uh, without vendor locking while improving uh, the efficiency of our observability stack. So this is the statement the prob states the problem. And on top of, based on this problem, what is the, the solution? I would like to start to drafting this, this solution uh, by showing a diagram which is kind of compile everything in a single image and afterwards we are going to jump into the details. So for this first image, uh, in the rows uh, you can see the telemetry signals and as columns you can see from the left to the right um, the application source code where the telemetry uh, is, starts and then they all goes to tele open telemetry collectors. We are going to talk more in deep about the, the, those deployments of open telemetry collectors because they are different for each telemetry sig signal. And then we have the data syncs. So in this architecture, we are now using as da data sync for logs, we are using AWS managed open search. Uh, for metrics, we are using uh, the AMP, AWS uh, managed Prometheus. And for traces, we are using Honeycomb. Um, and in all of those three, we can do visualization of the data, but also we try as much to centralize things that are common and shared among uh, all teams or that are, let's say, common dashboards, for example, into Grafana. Also alerting. All right, so what are the... the, the the premises in, in this solution. Basically, open telemetry protocol on every uh, possible layer. So from the origin in the libraries, we, we are going to talk about it, but as you can see in the previous image, we have diagnostics library, which is a library we built internally on the company, which goes as open telemetry protocol since the beginning of the request data flow and, and so on. So open telemetry protocol on every possible layer. Um, also trying to create common library um, interfaces where teams can, can have the same sort of interface while implementing and while sending telemetry data over the pipeline. Um, using open telemetry collectors is one I, uh, ideal part for getting into the um, ingestion point for every telemetry signal, even logs. We are going to talk about it, but everything goes through the open telemetry collectors, so we can then export them to the, to the proper data sync. And for each telemetry signal, as I stated before, uh, we believe that uh, not a single vendor is able to, to handle the, in the best possible way uh, all of the telemetry signal, so we decided to go uh, with different vendors for each telemetry signal. Also, uh, for in increasing our ability to, to keep things up and running. We created a sharded architecture for this solution. I will uh, jump into this as well uh, further. All right, what were the outcomes after uh, deploying this, this solution? First, on the slice of our cloud, cloud investments, uh, we were able to reduce 41% of our observability costs. Um, also, delivering a long-term solution, whether Developers, at the end of the day, doesn't have to change or do deployments or migration if we change vendors in the data sinks. Because we have a library in place, we can simply say, okay, you're sending telemetry data over open telemetry protocol, and if we change the backend, we change something in the observability team. But we, does, we don't require uh, engineers to migrate anything from the source origin. So it allows us to evolve and innovate fast. Also today, and moving further, uh, this solution is able to handle and are ingesting today 6.5 terabytes per day of telemetry data. Well, let's jump into the architectural part of this solution, and then we, let's start by the library. We have designed uh, an interface, whether just for example, like engineer can say, hey, logger.info.warn.debug, or system metric, 
a common interface where we could implement in various uh, languages. Those are the top three languages within the company. So we developed the same library. We have the diagnostics library for each one of those uh, languages. And we were able to create common code, for example, resilience control, back off, uh, retries, circuit breaks, and so on, on a single place. Also, asynchronous um, uh, communication and enforce some of the things like open telemetry protocol and gRPC in place. Um, here is an example of the common interface just out of curiosity. So the libraries implement those interfaces and engineers as our customers for from observability can implement and, and send telemetry data using the same interface. Also, uh, we delivered a common fields like all sort of telemetry data. We have common fields that they can come built in with the library, and sometimes for the developers to add themselves, uh, add it by themselves those data inside the telemetry payload. So it's nice when it comes to the visualization part because they can correlate things based on those common fields and things that are sensible to the businesses part. Well, let's jump a little bit on the deployment for the collectors, the middle part on, on the previous uh, diagram architecture. So the first thing I would like to mention in, in this deployment are the open telemetry collectors. They are simply a deployment inside a Kubernetes uh, where we run collectors inside containers, and then they are able to handle the ingestion part of, of the telemetry data they are sending, whether it is from logs, metrics, or traces. This is pretty much the same kind of deployment for all of the collectors. Uh, the configuration part, which is, is the part that will be different, for, for, for each one of the, the telemetry signals, pipelines. So the second part in this architecture, it's a very straightforward way of doing in ingestion, like ingress part or the networking part on this architecture. So it's simply using a, a load balancer uh, issue, external DNS plugin just to, to update how the library will be we will be reaching uh, this, the internal service on, inside Kubernetes. And everything is managed by Argo CD, which is uh, where we change configurations for issue, external DNS, or even collectors. So everything we update, it goes onto a pipeline, and then Argo CD is, a, is, is the responsible to deploy and put those things in production to us. Well, moving further, uh, how we build our, co our collectors? Because we use a custom collector, we write uh, extensions for the open telemetry collectors. We use the open, tele open telemetry collector builder uh, for, for it. So we build our own binary. So in our pipeline, what we have is we have our, a bunch of source code where we extend open telemetry collectors. And then we have this pipeline where we build the binary, then we create a container image, and then we notify. Um, Argo CD for triggering the deployment, and then Kubernetes is responsible to, to do the progressive rollout for us. So this is pretty much how we uh, put our collector's binary in production. And here's an example of how we build OpenTelemetry Collector. If you are familiar with OpenTelemetry Collector Builder, this is pretty much what you have in a, inside an YAML file. And those are the parts that are important to us. So in every one of those layers, uh, those four layers, we have uh, private code running as if we implemented receivers for specialized use cases internally, also exporters for internal systems or other vendors or other systems that we need to communicate with and send telemetry data over. Also, the processors, which are a special part for us because it's a way we can manipulate data on the fly. So telemetry data goes over the collectors. We can manipulate this data and then uh, take decisions whether in where we can do something. So one example for it is sampling. I will, I will speak uh, more about it in the resilient part, resilience part on this presentation. So here's the telemetry data flow to, to try to simplify things. Uh, imagine, so the, the telemetry data 
flows from the diagnostics library, and depending on the DNS, if the, if the developer is saying, hey, logger dot uh, error, we know this is a log, and then it goes over the, the, the proper URL that is able to reach the, the load balancer in front of this entire uh, Kubernetes cluster, which is responsible for the logs part, the logs pipeline, and then it's, it gets ingested, processed, and then exported to open search. The same flow goes for metrics and traces. And when it comes to visualization, we have uh, the role for, for, of Grafana. Grafana, as I mentioned, it, uh, we use it to reusable dashboards and central dashboards and common dashboards for, for engineers. So they also, they are able to create their own dashboards, but we also have uh, the ability to have common things and they, let's say, get things out of the box, just because we have Grafana and can create templates and so on. They also can use uh, in create visualization, specialized visualizations directly on OpenSearch, uh, uh, AMP, and Honeycomb. So we have the governance for teams and team engineers all over, depending on SSO from the company, so we have groups and, and ability to uh, create roles and permissions for teams. and types of different users to have access to different types of data. Well, just to reinforce to the, the, the diagram after going through the architectural part, just to recall how we, we designed this uh, architecture. Well, with this solution today, we have four terabytes of logs um, going to open search. We have 150 million active time series going to AMP today. And here is important to mention that even business metrics, sometimes we are sending them there and we are able to have high, high, high cardinality uh, on some of all those metrics, which is something important, we know. Um, and also, when it comes to traces, we are importing today, ingesting today, 2.15 billion uh, individual events on, on Honeycomb. All right, let's jump and talk about resilience. Well, with this architecture, we have to make it work, make it stay uh, up and running. So one of the premises we have for this solution is to fail locally and not globally. So. And when, when I say it, imagine a scenario where I can lose uh, a collector or, a, or a, a one of the data sinks and also some ingestion in the origin that goes wrong. So with that, what we mentioned, we designing with this architecture for fail locally. So if sometimes I lose uh, one collector for the logs part, okay, I can say and, and communicate to the engineering teams, hey, we have an outage of observability, but this outage is only for logs. We still have metrics and traces. And in the previous scenario, we use it to have, uh, when we have outages for observability, probably uh, the teams have no observability at all. So it, it was a problem for engineers. So by breaking those things into different pipelines, and I will talk about charging as well, uh, we can have a way for failing locally, and it's easier as well to communicate with engineers. Another thing for resilience is the pod outscaling, uh, pretty much regular stuff for, for Kubernetes. But here uh, I have to state that for different deployments, we have different configurations. So the log ingestion uh, behavior is different from the traces ingestion behavior. The, the types of machines, the types, the way we do uh, out scaling, they are different from de depending on the telemetry data. So this was one of, one of the important parts as well for resilience. As I mentioned, we have shards. Well, they are businesses driven decisions on how we shard, but I would like to share something like, imagine, as I mentioned, a multi-tenant multi uh, platform for e-commerce, and then we have several uh, internal systems, but also modules and, and, and code. So some of them are core systems, and they should not fail or should not lose observability. And also, there are other small APIs, backend systems that are just supportive for the, the main applications. So in this case, we can split them into shards, so then we can avoid uh, losing telemetry or observability for the core systems, for example. So uh, I not only have the three telemetry uh, 
separations like logs, metrics, and traces, but we al also have shards. So when, when it comes to failure, I can lose the shard one for the logs pipeline. So it's even more locally than globally when it comes to fail. So it helps as well showing the engineers, hey, we have an outage for the logs pipeline, but only for shard one. You probably might not be affected if you are not in this shard. So this is another way of failing locally and improving uh, our observability. Well, another thing, it's one of our extensions. We allow teams to sample logs. So error logs doesn't get sampled. But if you're sending logger.info or success logs, uh, we just sample. We have this configuration. We implemented this extension for collectors. Y we allow teams to individually say, hey, this is my index, the my index name. I allow you to sample me by this percentage. So in this example, we have a team that's saying, OK, sample me by 75%. But in another case, we have zero percentage. Imagine a scenario, for example, a PCI compliance team that is implementing a payment system that you have to, to store 100% of the logs. So within this scenario, you, you just skip log, uh, sampling. But this is very nice for us as well. When it comes to sazonalities and the traffic grows up, we can uh, increase our default sampling percentage so observability stack doesn't grow linearly alongside with the uh, uh, with the pl platform itself. We are able to adjust those things on the fly. And it's the, the full percentage is up to the uh, observability team. But the individual indexes and individual teams, they, are, they have the freedom to configure and, and have their own percentage for sampling. Uh, another thing we do is the right ahead log. Uh, we implement a, a wall right before sending uh, telemetry to the data sync. So for example, if I have one of my vendors' systems, for example, OpenSearch, that is suffering any sort of failing, failure, uh, we see that on the retry, we are receiving failures from the data sync. We just open a circuit break, and then you start writing to an S3 bucket the entire telemetry data, and we have a Lambda function uh, or a a set of lambda functions that backfills this data into the data sync after it recovers from failure. And this is important to mention that for to communicate with our engineers, there is an important thing which uh, we are talking about. Uh, we are not losing data when it comes to this sort of failure. We are delaying data. It's different things that it's nice to us to have uh, this kind of SLA with our engineers. So we, we are not losing our data. We are delaying it because we, we are suffering an outage. So this right ahead log help us with it. Uh, also, we have the alerting part where I mentioned it. Uh, we use Grafana and allow teams to themselves create their dashboards and their alerts that we have a, a, an internal a structure for incident management. So they have their systems for incident manager management and they uh, do the communication with every on-call engineer. So the alert goes through this uh, other systems and then reach the on-call engineers. And the engineers themselves are able to create and, and uh, state what are their alerts and what are the inter interested metrics for them. Well, uh, some of the some tips on the migration step because we didn't switch a key and then we, we have uh, one a centralized solution and we are now using open telemetry protocol and with this new entire pipeline and so on. One of the important things for us were uh, RF RFC-like uh, document, documents, so we, we call them design docs. So we, we, we wrote design docs for this solution, called the entire engineers, all of the teams uh, that write the product it, itself. They jump in to say, hey, this works for me, this doesn't work for me, I have a problem, I need another protocol, I need a different part, uh, style of ingestion, I'm not using precisely open telemetry. We need help for this, for this and that. So it was uh, really helpful having this sort of uh, strategy and helped a lot throughout the migration step. Also, buy-in from the C-levels, uh, directors, everyone in the company understood that, okay, this is a, a company 
shift. This is not something that observability team is trying to push on the engineering teams. So it helped a lot throughout this migration. Also, understanding our, our customers. At the end of the day, the customer for observability team uh, in our company are the engineers. So we jump and sit together with them, discuss it, and under, understood individual cases and common cases. So we could draft and, and design this solution. Uh, when it comes to resilience, it was really important to engage the, uh, our vendors. So uh, how does your data sync, your application fails? How can I prevent failures? and so on. So we had to engage with uh, those vendors in order to, to try to be more resilient, resilient and be up and running. Also, find early adopters uh, was helpful to have some teams that, as any new technology, as any new innovation, there are some people, uh, they say, hey, I would like to be part of it. Let me try it. So engage those people, try to, to bring them uh, close to the team and help you draft and, and check if the solution is, is going well and is it stable enough for reaching other uh, teams. Well, just a, a briefly recap. Um, then we, we just saw, uh, understood about VTEX and the multi-tenant uh, e-commerce platform. Then we jump into the problem we are trying to solve. And then we draft the solution plus the outcomes we, we reach it with the solution. Then we jump into the architectural part, sharing everything, uh, how we, sp we deploy the collectors, how we do our Kubernetes part, and so on. And spoke about resilience, how to keep this application and this uh, new solution up and running. Uh, and finally, I would like to say thanks uh, to the OpenTelemetry community. This ecosystem uh, enables Vitex to innovate fast and efficiently. So uh, we are really thankful for that. Thank you, OpenTelemetry. And we reached uh, the end of this presentation. And I, I don't want to stand between you and lunch. So uh, thank you, folks. Yeah. Thank you, Gustavo. That was an awesome talk. Uh, I know we are over time, but I want to give time for one or two questions. Does anyone have any quick questions? Yeah. Logan. Uh, 